Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about the controllers. Here, what is controller? So last session in this unit, we discussed about the compensator thing. So first we defined controller. Here, the definition is a controller is a device. It is nothing but a device which is used to control the transient and steady state performance as per requirement. So it will control both transient as well as the steady state response, both responses. So you know that what is meaning of transient? Transient means, so if the, for example, if the system has to reach this point and the system is follows like this, the output is follows like this. So up to this area, which has the oscillations, you know that this is the transient and after getting the oscillations the magnitude will be the constant then this is called as the steady state okay so it will be useful control both this this system and the this system as per requirement understand yes here generally the best system demands smallest rise time so what do you mean a rise time rise time means to reach the 50 percent of this time is the rise time tr and the smallest settling time. Settling time means time required to reach the settle the settle the output. That means this is this is maybe plus or plus or minus five percent or plus or minus three percent tolerance. Okay. And steady state handler. What is the steady state handler generally? So it has to reach this. Sometimes maybe the output is this. Then it is called the the error between it called the steady state error. And, and smallest peak overshoot peak overshoot means the difference between the steady state point and the oscillating point is nothing but the peak overshoot so these are the general the requirement these are the generally the requirement so every system has to maintain the rise time smallest rise time and the smallest settling time and the smallest steady state error and the smallest peak overshoot these parameters should be maintained for the any system which give the output okay so generally the diagram is like this so we have a system j of s and we have to add, add a controller to the system that controller is controller is represents with the gain that is the gc gc of s gc of s okay and it will give the output so by adding this we will maintain all these parameters okay so this is about the introduction of the controllers next we have different types of controllers are available so we will discuss each and every controller deeply first controller is proportional controller so this proportional controller is represented with the symbol of kp and the second controller is the integral controller so this controller is generally represents like this ki by s yes. Why it is Ki by S? Integration means generally like this. In time domain this is. So whenever it is converted into the frequency domain, then it become 1 by S like that. Yes, that's why it is the integral controller. Derivative controller. Derivative controller means it has some S into Kd. Okay, Kd means derivative gain multiplied with S is the derivative controller. So that is represents with d by dt so if you if you convert it to the s domain then it become s into something next the proportional and integral controller so what is this meaning it is the combination of both proportional control as well as integral controller that means that is kp plus ki by s ki by s fifth last is proportional and derivative controller same this is the proportional plus derivative controller that is kd into s derivative always have the s multiplication of s and integral controller always have the division of s and last is the proportional integral and derivative controller that is represents like this kp plus integral controller means integral means 1 by s into ki plus derivative controller means s into kd s into kd these are the different different types of the controllers different different kinds of the controllers here if you observe here 
proportional controller is a constant thing that is kp it doesn't have any s terms integral controller is having division with the s and derivative controller is multiplied with the s and proportional integral is combination proportional and derivative is combination proportional integral derivative is again the combination so that's why this is the division of the types of the controllers next is we will discuss about the proportional controller first so here the proportional controller already we know that generally it is represents with which have the gain controller gain is the kp controller gain is the kp so to understand the proportional controller we will take one example so here the example is the, we will consider the example the given example is like this 1 by s into s plus 10 this is the general g of s this is the general g of s find out for this find out the characteristic equation for this g of s what we will get we will get the s into s plus 10 plus 1 okay equal to 0 so by doing the modification we will get s square plus 10 s plus 1 is equals to 0 so we will write in the general second order compare with the second order characteristic equation then we will get what is the omega n omega n value is the 1 and what about 2 zeta omega n 2 zeta omega n equal to 10 so if you substitute this we will get the zeta value is the 5 we will get the zeta value is the 5 so wherever the zeta value is 5 if the zeta value is more than 1 you know that the system is over damped system over damped system so this is not the required system we have to control the over damped system is very slow system we have to control this for this for this we will add to control this we will add controller we will add this proportional controller that that is like this so here the input is there and it has summation point here we are giving the proportional controller kp with the g of s and it will give the output the output is the c of s and this is the negative feedback gain this is the negative feedback gain now the system is become like this so now the the system is like this g of s into h of s equal like this that is kp by kp by and 1 by s into s plus 10 if you find out now if you find out the characteristic equation for the system directly we will get this value that is s square plus 10 s plus kp is equal to 0 so from this we will write the omega n value omega n equal to root kp simply because here we are replacing the omega n square right and we have we have 2 zeta omega n equal to 10 so here 2 zeta omega n equal to 10 then we will substitute so 2 into zeta zeta means so we have to find out omega means root kp equal to 10 then 2 5 times cancel then the zeta value equal 5 by root kp so by controlling the kp we can control the zeta whenever we are controlling the zeta means the system should be maintained the system should be maintained okay so how it maintains so i will write here so if for example we, we are getting the zeta value is like this the zeta value is phi by root kp phi by root kp for that if the kp value equal if kp value equal 25 for example then what is the zeta value so we will get zeta value is 1 that whenever zeta value is 1 we know that that is system is the critically damped system critically damped system if zeta value equal sorry if kp value equal to 100 then zeta value equal to we have the 0.5 
then the system is become the under damped system so by doing this we will get by controlling the kp value we can modify the system we can modify the system okay so this is the importance of the kp proportional controller this is the importance of the proportional controller and we will learn some points from this it is p control is used to change the transient performance of the system so p control always useful to control the transient response by this we can't remove complete error in the system so always error is related to the error is related to steady state system generally so here we can't remove the complete error in the system that's why it is not possible to remove the error in the system as kp increases to get the better transient performance whenever kp value increases automatically we will get the better transient performance but but the zeta is less than if the zeta value is low then automatically percentage of mp magnitude percentage will be increases because it has the more oscillation then the system become the more oscillatory and whenever the system is more oscillatory the system is having a less relative stability less relative stability so these are the what is the positive thing positive thing is transient performance is improved what is the negative thing the negative thing is we can't remove the complete error and so that's why it will improve the transient response but the system become the oscillatory and the less relative stable okay this is about the proportional controller okay i hope all of you understand this session thank you